Thank you for accepting uh, to be on our uh, Children's Rights Channel. Um, International Children's Centre recently launched a YouTube channel to reach young people, children, NGOs and others interested and who may not have uh, other resources to know some of the uh, children's rights issues and some of the uh, institutions that are instrumental in bringing children's rights into reality. Um, well, before starting our conversation, can you please uh, tell us um, who you are and uh, who, what you represent? Mm -hmm. My name is Elda Moreno. I'm uh, head of a uh, department in the Council of Europe, which is a uh, an organization for human rights in Europe uh, comprising 47 member states and uh, my daily duties uh, impl include uh, protecting children's rights and promoting children's rights, um, uh, eliminating violence against women, uh, promoting gender equality and also fighting uh, trafficking in human beings. I know that your position is, is new, it's called uh, Gender and Human Dignity mm -hmm. and why human dignity? Well, human dignity is really a very, at the very heart of uh, what the Council of Europe is doing to uh, promote human rights. And because one of our uh, objectives is uh, eliminating all forms of violence, uh, and we know that many uh, all forms of violence are in, uh, uh, in conflict with uh, human dignity. It's, it's really a, a challenge to human dignity. So it is important to remind everybody that human dignity should be at the heart of everything that we do. Um, thank you for this uh, explanation. Um, I would like to know what uh, Council of Europe uh, does uh, for human rights of children. And I know that Turkey is uh, a part of the Council of Europe family. Uh, so one of the member countries. Generally, people confuse Council of Europe with the European Union. Uh, so can you tell us what this organization is doing, uh, what it provides for its member states? So the main difference between the Council of Europe and the European Union is that uh, Whereas they both were born of the same ideal is that, you know, that there's never again a, a war like uh, the Second World War. Uh, the leaders in Europe had different visions of how we could build a Europe uh, um, for social, economic progress and uh, where, you know, peace is a lasting and sustainable project. The Council of Europe ideal, the vision of the Council of Europe for achieving that is to build Europe upon values. Values are human rights, democracy and the rule of law. So we like uh, to say in the Council of Europe that children are not many human beings with many human rights. So that each and every right that we recognize to an individual, for instance through the European Convention of Human Rights, uh, also apply to children. So uh, one of the major achievements of the Council of Europe is the European Convention of Human Rights. And there is no little footnote in the convention that says that this is only for adults. So Turkey has ratified the European Convention of Human Rights and some other instruments, uh, conventions of the Council of Europe, and has promised to uh, protect those rights and guarantee those rights to all ch children in Europe, in, in Turkey. Sorry. Thank you. Um, th this is one of the uh, the, the, the uh, European uh, Human Rights uh, Convention mm -hmm. is is one of the uh, tools actually mm -hmm. that uh, the Council of Europe yes. uh, uh, produced. Uh, what other uh, systems or what are what other standards are there, and what are what other recommendations or uh, systems are in place? Uh, for the European Council uh, member states. The Council of Europe has to build this Europe uh, for and with children. Uh, we have several tools. One is the, the norms, so the conventions, the standards, and I have mentioned the European Convention of Human Rights, but there are many others, like the Lanzarote Convention, which is a convention to protect children from sexual exploitation and sexual abuse that Turkey has also ratified. 
Uh, there is another convention that Turkey has ratified, which is a convention uh, which, uh, whose name is Istanbul Convention, because it was open to the signature in Istanbul, and it's uh, for preventing and combating violence against women, so against girls, and domestic violence. So these two treaties explain uh, how uh, they contain all the measures that countries have to take to prevent violence, to protect the victims, and also to make sure that uh, there is no impunity, so that the offenders can be effectively pro prosecuted. So the norms are important, but we also need to make sure that they are applied and they are implemented. So another Council of Europe tool is what we call monitoring. So there are um, independent experts, there are there's the, there's the European Court of Human Rights, which looks how the promises that uh, the, the countries have made are or not respected. So when a country hasn't respected its promise, uh, the, the European Court of Human Rights, for instance, will uh, uh, condemn the, the, the country. So children in Turkey, for instance, can go to the European Court of Human Rights uh, if they feel that the right has been violated. Uh, and these monitoring mechanisms help countries to progress, to make progress and help Europe to see how we better can um, respect human rights. Then there is another tool which is the policy. So for instance, all ministries of education of all countries in Europe come together and discuss how to uh, challenge uh, violence in schools, for instance, how to uh, promote education for human rights, all ministries of justice come together to discuss how mm, mm, justice can be made more child friendly, so how justice can better take into account the needs, the, the rights and the opinions of uh, children. And so every kind of policy sector, health, uh, sports, um, uh, social services, the Council of Europe bring together all these professionals with civil society, with other international organizations, so that we can learn from the best practices and provide the best responses uh, available, so that all countries can get inspiration from the best practices in Europe. So this was the third tool. There's another tool, uh, which is what we call assistance or um, uh, cooperation, and this is when uh, a country, for instance, is not performing well, is not doing what it should do, uh, but maybe not because of bad will, but because it doesn't find the means or it doesn't have the expertise. So the Council of Europe will help the country, for instance, to, to review the institutional framework, to, for instance, to, to pass a law on a child ombudsman, or to review the law on adoption, or to review the, the juvenile justice system. So the Council of Europe enters into a dialogue with a given country, and we have been doing uh, that with Turkey, um, uh, for instance, in the field of justice. Okay. So, and the final tool, the fifth tool, is awareness raising. It is very important that uh, uh, people know about children's rights, that people realize that children are rights holders, that they have rights and not just uh, people who we have to protect, so that we have to empower children, and uh, also that they know the extent of some forms of violence, for instance. So we have, for instance, run two uh, campaigns uh, recently, one against corporal punishment of children, and another one against sexual exploitation and abuse. And one of the main messages of these two campaigns is that parents and people who are in di daily contact with children have to know how to prevent those forms of violence, or have to know the, the, the risks of uh, those forms of violence. So we call these campaigns empowering campaigns because we try to give to all these people and including to children the tools that they need to uh, prevent the violence, to report the violence and to understand what is happening to them and how to react and how to work together so that this doesn't happen to them and to other people. So, for instance, we have developed in the One in Five campaign, which is uh, to uh, um, eliminate sexual violence against children, uh, tools that help parents to discuss this sensitive issue 
with the young children because experts in Europe told us that uh, uh, there is, uh, but it's very, very difficult to prevent uh, sexual violence because uh, parents, adults do not want to discuss this issue with the children. So children who are very young very often doesn't, do, not, do not know how to protect themselves and do not know what is happening to them. Do not know they are, they, they, they are ashamed, they, are, they feel guilty, uh, they don't know to whom to, to talk. So um, through uh, these campaigns or through these tools, we, we give parents the possibility to help children to identify the abuse, to protect themselves, and in particular also to help, to seek help if uh, need be. I'm happy to say that International Children's Centre with uh, Council of Europe is going to uh, uh, implement this campaign in mm -hmm. Turkey uh, with our partners, uh, including the government partners. Um, I have uh, one more question. Uh, we, we have been actually talking about uh, Council of Europe because the, the members are states. Mm -hmm. Um, you, you're mainly working with states, but you also say that you also have a very good dialogue with, with uh, 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 NGOs, mm -hmm. non-governmental organizations. Um, how, uh, what would you like to say to non-governmental organizations in Turkey? And also, uh, you, you mentioned that uh, you, you take child participation uh, to the heart and uh, find it very important and try best to uh, empower children. What would you like to say to children as well? Mm -hmm. So this is actually one question with two mm -hmm. hats, uh, okay. two NGOs and two children in Turkey. How can they use Council of Europe uh, as well for their own, mm -hmm. for, for the benefit, for the best interest of the children in Turkey? The, the Council of Europe program on children's rights is called Building a Europe for and with children so and for us uh, working with children and reaching out to children is really very very important uh, we are an organization based in Strasbourg in France so we are far away from many of the 150 million children in Europe but that's why we work with uh, very very good partners and civil society is uh, part of this uh, uh, partnership uh, of the Council of Europe. Uh, civil society is uh, working with us in with any of the single tools that I mentioned. Civil society is helping us shaping the normative frameworks so or the, the conventions, is helping us to draft conventions. Civil society is helping us to monitor uh, progress that is uh, go, um, achieved in or when there are problems. Uh, civil society comes to the council and should come to the council and say we have an issue here with uh, migrant children or with uh, children in detention or with children violence in schools so that we know that there is something that needs to be addressed and that we help the country to address uh, this problem. Um, of course, civil society also uh, helps us uh, when we try to assist countries in developing laws, uh, developing institutions uh, and processes. We, of course, uh, count on children, um, civil society, as you were mentioning, to uh, disseminate the messages that we produce in Strasbourg. So, for instance, the campaigns, uh, uh, we can't run a campaign in 47 member states from, the, from Strasbourg. So that's why it's very important for us that civil society, governments, ombuds people in the countries take these campaigns, adapt them to the social context, to the needs, and disseminate uh, the message uh, with their uh, partners at national level. So um, we have been working also more and more with children uh, in these different issues. For instance, when we uh, realized that it was, uh, there was a need to see how the uh, justice system could be better adapted to the needs uh, uh, on the rights of children, we started negotiating with the international, with, the, with our partners, with the uh, civil society, with the governments, uh, try to see how justice should be so that it is better for children. And in this process, we also associated children. So we actually asked children 
how uh, their, their, their views about justice, how they think that justice could uh, imp be improved, and, and their answers uh, helped us to really um, uh, improve the text that we were uh, drafting. So now the, the child-friendly justice guidelines of the Council of Europe have uh, uh, integrated the, these views of children. So. Um, I think that it is very important that children have access to their rights and we have uh, developed a lot of material uh, also for children to, um, to know better their rights, so adapted a little bit to, 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 to their taste, uh, to uh, their uh, uh, understanding of words, uh, avoiding difficult words, uh, and um, we are more and more uh, trying to uh, create spaces for children to tell us what they wish and what they need and of course what we ask government is to create those possibilities also for children to do that. Well, thank you for this interview. Uh, before uh, closing this interview would you like to say any concluding remarks uh, on children's rights mm -hmm. and uh, Turkey also Council of Europe? The, the, when we created the, the program Building a Europe for and with Children, we designed a logo, which is a puzzle. It's a, a, a game, a Chinese, a very a, a old Chinese game. And this puzzle is made of seven pieces. And uh, the challenge is that we can create many shapes. You can do houses, you can do animals, or, but you have always to use the seven pieces. You can't leave a piece aside. So building a Euro forum with children is that kind of challenge. We have to work all together and make sure that we, uh, with children, with civil society, with the governments, um, share uh, a vision, an idea of what we want to achieve and we do it together so that this is, um, uh, we become a continent which is fit for children and uh, where children's rights first. Thank you for uh, being with us uh, mm -hmm. and have a good stay in Turkey. Thank you very much.